welcome to the Troublemaker Show. Happy 2017! We are officially in the New Year's now. Every year when I wake up on the morning of the 1st of January, there are a few things that I like to do and one of the very first of the few is to check out how the entire world celebrated their New Year. My top favorites, London, Big Ben, Sydney, Australia, mesmerizing. Burj Khalifa in Dubai, mind blowing. India, my home country. New Year's Eve festivities take a dark turn in one of India's largest cities as multiple women are allegedly molested by revelers. It happened Saturday night, December 31st in downtown Bangalore, where thousands of people were gathered to ring in the New Year. A local newspaper reports, quote, the brazen mass molestation of women in the streets, and one witness told The Guardian that women struggling to escape the crowd were groped, insulted, and provoked. According to a nightmare for thousands of Bangalore citizens as women were groped and allegedly molested in full public view, adding sore to the wounds of the victims, top Karnataka ministers and police have said this was a routine matter. The headlines looked something like this. At first it made me really angry, but then I thought, well, that's just another Tuesday in India. Nothing new about it. In fact, give me a day in the year when a woman in India is not assaulted or raped or killed to be honest. As awful as that news was, the reactions of the people on social media were ranging from all sorts of disgusting to complete and utter stupid and dumb. For your sake, I recorded three of the best ones that I'm going to talk to you about. Number one, Bangalore is a safe place, you know. It's the outsider people, the immigrants who come from the other cheap, low-class, sleazy states and they come to Bangalore and they do it. Now, personally, I've never been to Bangalore, but I have a very close friend who I am in touch with and once in 24 hours we talk. That's how close we are, okay? Recently, just a few days ago actually, she told me that she was molested on the street just by her house, okay? She was picking something and she was uh, molested on the street. She was terrified and she shared it with me immediately. As I just said, we speak what, at least once in 24 hours. She said that the guy uh, molested her and she was terrified. I said, well, one of the first things you should be doing is inform the police because if he molested you, it's probably possible that the guy is molesting other women around the colony as well. And maybe if you go forward and can make a complaint, then other women would come forward too. And that would, you know, help uh, identify the guy. She was motivated to do that. And she spoke with her landlady that this and this happened. And, you know, we should be doing something. And guess what the first thing the landlady said? What were you wearing? Why were you out at that time? You live alone. You should be living very carefully. It's all your fault. And if the police comes to my house, I'm not letting you be in this house anymore. She is obviously a single girl living on her own away from her family. So to keep the roof over her head, the landlady shut her up. She began blaming my friend with the same classic misogynistic bullshit about finding the faults with women rather than finding uh, a threatening behavior of a man around the colony because that's just normal right people just attack and touch and grope and say mean things and shove out their body parts out in public that's just normal behavior right what's abnormal is to go out of the house is to pick something for yourself so you don't die out of hunger and another fyi when India is voted at one of the world's worst places to be a woman in, I don't think I read a clause that said, that said except for Bangalore. I think that applies to the entire country. Okay, so whoever these people are who are coming out and saying, oh, no, no, Bangalore is not like that. Bangalore is totally safe. Bangalore is a good city. Bangaloreans are good people. Just move on because that's not true. Number two, Western influence. And now, listen to this. 
Minister of Karnataka J. Parameshwara told the Indian Express that although there were 1,500 police officers deployed to the area on Saturday night, quote, such incidents do happen. He blamed young people trying to copy Western mindsets for the incident. <laughs> Number one, rape, molestation, assault do happen all around the world, not just in the West. And typically seeing in the last few years the kind of record India has maintained and the reputation, global reputation of being the rape capital of the world, I don't think rape and assault is so much of a Western thing as much as it has become an Indian thing. It's actually a human thing that humans and jerks in general are all over the world. But since you have created this kind of reputation, it's become more of an Indian thing. So much so that in the Australian courts, an Indian young guy had to let go, a molester had to let go because he said that in my culture, assault equals marriage equals romance. There we go. Number two, if you mean that short clothes and drinking habits are the, under the influence of the West, then let me ask you one question. What skirt was Draupadi wearing when she was raped? What time of day is it when more than a hundred women are raped in India every single day? And how drunk were the thousands of housewives who were burned alive for dowry this year alone? Do your homework, Mr. Politician. Okay, the third reaction. This one, I'll enact for you. Good morning. Welcome to womenarehumans.com. Today, we are covering the traumatic incident that happened on the New Year's Eve in Bangalore, India. Because the incident is so shameful, but we identified one person as an eyewitness and he is very willingly ha happy to talk to us about this. Let's go. Sir, what happened on the 31st here? Would you like to share with us, please? Okay, sure. Yeah, it was a very dark, cold night, you know? It was so cold, I had to put another brief on inside. That's how cold it was. Okay, sure, okay. Oh yeah, and then there was this huge crowd, that's big, big, huge, massive crowd. There were women, all sorts of women, all sizes of women, wearing all sorts of revealing clothes, the short ones, the tight ones, the long ones, every kind of clothes. I did not molest one woman. One woman I did not molest. I'm telling you, I did not molest one woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So I continued my journey. I took the bus to my home back, and all the buses were packed. There was this bus packed with women all over. Again, there were so many women inside. Half of them were drunk, half of them were not with the male guardians of the family inside, but not one woman I molested. Not one woman I molested. I'm telling you, hashtag not all men, hashtag not all men. When girls are drunk, they temporarily stop hating other girls. I watch porn with women. I can't. Like every time I sit down to watch porn with women, she will start talking. And then keep talking. Like throughout the video. Nee, 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 kya and then there are other things like all women shop, all women compete, all women hate each other, all women bitch about each other, or all women here love to hear the three magical words from men. You know the only three words that I want to hear from any man? I got burgers! Dishes are done. Want some cake? Despite all that crap, women are not so weak that they have to go and defend themselves with the hashtag every time something serious happens and say not all women hate each other, not all women are bitchy, not all women shop, not all women do this and that. Because you know what? There are more important things for us to focus on and that's where our attention should be. Right now, the victims need our sympathy. And if you can't give them your sympathy, just please keep your ideas to yourself and stop trying to hijack the attention from the victims to yourself. It's like when someone says, hey, humans are causing global warming. You go say, nope, not all humans. I don't use paper. I just use tissue. We already know not all men. Okay, so can we just move on now, please? And stop blaming the West. They got their own stuff to deal with now. 
The worst thing is, every time when something like this happens, the focus always goes from the main issue of violence against women to finding faults or the government or the parties or nowadays social media. So here are three things that you can do right now if you like to be helpful. First, identify molester friends. I'm pretty sure that in that huge crowd of people, it was called mass molestation. So I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people who you know are involved. If you have a quote friend who was a molester, who was involved doing such things, please identify that person to the police and let them know that this is one of the people involved. You don't have to give your name. You can be anonymous and you can still report that. Number two, photographs. In that huge crowd of people, I'm pretty sure many people had their phones out. So if you had your phones and you were recording or taking pictures or if you see any suspicious activity recorded in your phone, please give that to the police so that they can identify at least some of those jerks who were molesting those women. And number three, support the victims. Instead of finding faults and instead of finding whatever the hell reason you can to blame the women there, please try to understand that wearing something or drinking or going out at some point of night is not the reason why molestation occurs. Molestations and rapes occur because someone decided to do that. And that's all. That's all for today. Please subscribe to this channel if you find something really interesting in this video or if you would like to share similar thoughts. Take care. Bye-bye.